On the 22nd of August 2023, a light locomotive Class 90 operated by Freightliner Group passed signal Lima Sierra 5575, which protected the approach to Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1, at danger and navigated the junction, causing damage to the railway infrastructure. In today's video, we will explore the events leading up to the incident, the incident itself, and the steps taken to prevent another incident like this occurring again. Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1 is a key railway location to the south of Stafford Railway Station. It is the point where the up and down Stafford slow lines meet with the up and down Penkridge lines. Signalling is controlled in the Rugby Rail Operation Centre. Freightliner Group is a freight logistics company which regularly utilises the crew to Nuneaton via Stafford route for test runs for their locomotives out of their crew Bassford Hall vehicle maintenance facility. These test runs are often partaken after repairs have taken place to ensure that the locomotives work properly under active conditions before being returned to traffic following their work at Bassford Hall. This was the case on the 22nd of August 2023, when a Class 90, an overhead electric locomotive built by British Rail Engineering Limited in 1987, was scheduled for one of these regular circuits to Nuneaton and back. The locomotive itself was unit number 90006. It had spent the evening of the previous day at Freightliner's crew Bassford Hall vehicle maintenance facility after travelling down from Scotland. The unit was encountering a consistent problem where the vacuum circuit breaker, which interrupts the electrical supply from the overhead wires when tripped, kept tripping unexpectedly, resulting in a loss of line, line being referred to as the supply of electricity to the locomotive. The unit received maintenance from the fitters in the vehicle maintenance facility, and in the afternoon of the following day, the unit was prepared for a test run and assigned head code 0 Zulu 90, forming the 1427 departure from Crew Bassford Hall to Nuneaton and back. On board Zero Zulu 90 were two members of Freightliner's staff, the train driver and a fitter, a fitter being a technician who works on the locomotives. The fitter was on board to monitor the unit throughout the journey in case problems arose, and specifically there to observe if the vacuum circuit breaker fault had been resolved. Zero Zulu 90's outward journey to Nuneaton ran without fault or disruption, leaving crew at 14.21 and arriving into Nuneaton at 15.55, where the driver changed ends and began taking the service back towards crew Bassford Hall, seven minutes later. On both the outward and return journey, the fit remained in the cab of the Class 90, as normal practice to reduce distraction. The locomotive continued faultlessly up until just after Chugra Tunnel, when at 16.38 the vacuum circuit breaker on 90.006 tripped once again, right after passing signal Lima Sierra 5567, which was displaying a proceed aspect. The driver heard a loud thump as the VCB tripped and the line indicator went out. The driver began applying the brakes 10 seconds before passing over the AWS magnet for signal Lima Sierra 5571, which was displaying a double yellow aspect. During the braking process, the driver acknowledged the AWS warning for the upcoming 50 mile an hour reduction in speed limit on approach to Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1. The driver allowed the locomotive to coast at around 9 miles an hour as it approached the penultimate signal to Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1, signal Lima Sierra 5573, which was displaying a single yellow aspect. The driver brought 90006 to a stand right on the threshold of Lima Sierra 5573. The driver was about to contact the signaller to report the fault, but before they could, the fitter entered the cab, who was aware of the fault, and asked the driver if they had pressed the pan up slash reset button to see if the VCB would close. The driver did this and the VCB closed successfully. The line light illuminated and power was restored. The fitter confirmed to the driver that the locomotive was fit to continue and the driver applied power to continue the journey, just 27 seconds after the locomotive had come to a stand not realising that the signal they were standing against was still displaying a single yellow aspect. Meaning the next signal, Lima Sierra 5575, protecting the joining lines from Birmingham at Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1, was at danger. The fitter remained in the cab at this time. As the locomotive was running light, the unit accelerated rapidly, the speed set being capped at 75 miles an hour. The on-train data recorder noted that within 18 seconds the locomotive had accelerated up to 70 miles an hour. As the train reached its maximum cap speed of 75 miles an hour, the driver, at 16.40 and 45 seconds, spotted signal Lima Sierra 5575 displaying a danger aspect and immediately initiated full service braking, followed one second later by the application of the emergency brakes. 
Within that second, the unit passed over the TPWS overspeed sensor loops, which were linked to Lima Sierra 5575, with a danger approach speed of 46 miles an hour. As the unit was still travelling at 75 miles an hour, the TPWS system took action and initiated a full emergency brake demand, although this didn't make an impact as the emergency brakes were already applied. Five seconds later, with the unit still travelling around 70 miles an hour, the unit passed both the commencement of the 50 miles an hour permanent speed restriction alongside the AWS Magna for Lima Sierra 5575, of which the driver acknowledged the warning in the cab. At 16.40 and 58 seconds, Zero Zulu 90 passed signal Lima Sierra 5575 at danger at around 63 miles per hour. Another brake demand from the TPWS system was initiated, but this once again had no impact. The SPAD immediately caused a signal set for the southbound service at Stafford towards Wolverhampton, which would have been using the up Penkridge line to revert to danger. This occurred before the train had arrived in the platform. As Zero Zulu 90 passed the junction diamond, which in normal cases would be set for a movement onto the down Penkridge from Wolverhampton, service 2 Kilo 58, a Birmingham to crew service, was just clearing the points as it arrived into Stafford on the down Penkridge. As the route wasn't set for Zero Zulu 90, the diamond was set for the up Penkridge, which meant that the unit deviated violently from the down Stafford slow to the up Penkridge while moving at around 13 miles per hour. The unit came to a stop right before the switch tips, where the up Penkridge and up Stafford slow lines diverged. Despite the close proximity of Zero Zulu 90 and 2 Kilo 58, and the fact that in normal operation Zero Zulu 90 would have been routed onto the down Penkridge, the line that 2 Kilo 58 was on, the fact that Zero Zulu 90's route wasn't set past Lima Sierra 5575 meant that the junction diamond was not set for the down Penkridge, and therefore there would have been no possibility of collision between Zero Zulu 90 and 2 Kilo 58. Once the train had come to a stand at 16.41 and 48 seconds, the driver then contacted the signaller on the GSMR and informed them of the SPAD, and the train ending up on the up Penkridge. The signaller then made a railway emergency call and required all trains in the Stafford area to stop, having already been aware of the SPAD and the junction damage as a result of notifications from the signalling equipment. Network Rail and Freightliner staff were mobilised to the site alongside the RAIB. The Trent Valley Fast Lines reopened at 17.58, with the Wolverhampton Lines reopening at 22.30. The Stafford Slow Lines remained closed until the 1st of September. No injuries were reported as a result of the incident. The driver of Zero Zulu 90 tested negative for both drugs and alcohol. The RVIB investigation took place swiftly and identified an immediate cause alongside two causal factors. They found the immediate cause was that the manner in which the locomotive was driven meant that it was unable to stop before passing a Lima Sierra 5575 signal, which was at danger. As the class 90 was running as a light locomotive, all the tractive effort that otherwise would have been used to haul wagons or coaching stock was available to the locomotive. Therefore, it was able to accelerate extremely quickly in these circumstances. Additionally, the stopping distance of the train is, is arguably degraded when a locomotive is running light, as it does not have the aid of the braking effort of attached wagons or coaching stock. Speed restrictions are often applied to locomotives running light as, as a means to combat the risks associated with these potential disruptions. Combined, the Class 90 running light meant that it could accelerate very quickly while having a comparatively poor braking performance. The RVIB found that the locomotive was not driven in a way that accounted for these factors, therefore resulting in the passing of signal Lima Sierra 5575 at danger and entering Stafford Trent Valley Junction No. 1. Moving on to the causal factors, the first causal factor of the two identified was the fact that the driver accelerated rapidly against a single yellow aspect displayed by signal Lima Sierra 5573. The VCB tripped just as the driver was entering an area of cautionary signals. Right before the VCB had tripped, the driver had accelerated to the maximum line speed of 75 miles per hour, although it should be noted that this was in excess of the restrictive speed required for light locomotives in this range, as it was supposed to be 60 miles per hour. When the driver brought the unit to a stand after the VCB tripped, they were likely stopped less than 5 metres from signal Lima Sierra 5573, still displaying a single yellow aspect. The driver stated that they do not recall making a conscious choice to stop at signal Lima Sierra 5573, but it's a common practice as the rulebook states that the drivers must report their exact location and signals are easily identifiable. The driver did not contact the signaller in the end as a result of the VCB closing following the first attempt to restore it. 
complying with section 12.3 of module AC of the rulebook, stating that if the line light goes out, you can continue normally if you can reset at the first attempt, or the line light is restored, and you can regain power again. As the rulebook stated, they were free to continue. The driver was likely determined to get the unit moving as quickly as possible to avoid any further delay or disruption, which leads on to the second causal factor, that being that the driver's attention was distracted from the prevailing signal sequence by the unexpected fault. Reports state that the driver could not recall seeing Lima Sierra 5573 displaying a single yellow aspect, and this is likely the case because if the driver had been conscious of the fact that the next signal was at danger, as they otherwise would be approaching Lima Sierra 5575 slowly and in a safe state to stop before it. The RVIB noted that it was possible that the signal head of Lima Sierra 5573 may have been obstructed from clear view as a result of the close proximity of the unit stopped against it. Although the driver acknowledged the AWS warning for Lima Sierra 5573 on approach before stopping the train to address the VCB fault, it's likely that the fault, alongside the probable pressure to get the train moving again as soon as possible to prevent disruption, meant that the driver's awareness of Lima Sierra 5573's aspect lapsed. The RVIB noted that, while functional, the visual Sunflower AWS indication in the cab did not act as an, as an effective reminder in this incident. It's possible that if the driver noted the AWS indication, they may have considered the fact that the last signal's AWS magnet activation indicated cautionary aspects. The RVIB noted that the driver was not distracted by a mobile phone or any other electronic device. The RVIB also identified two underlying factors to the incident, those being that Freightliner had no effective processes for managing the risks specific to test runs using light locomotives, and that Freightliner's training and competence management of the driver had not equipped them to deal with the unexpected and potentially distracting situation in an effective and safe manner. These likely played a small but nevertheless present role in the accident occurring, as the absence of said processes meant that the driver may have been less equipped for dealing with the situation in an effective manner. Finally, the RVIB identified four factors that may have exacerbated the consequences of the incident, those being the driver used the maximum available power to accelerate the locomotive rapidly to 75 miles an hour after resetting the fault on the locomotive, meaning the locomotive reached speeds that the driver was unable to stop at before Lima Sierra 5575. The driver was driving the locomotive at speeds above those permitted by the rule book for light locomotives, as the locomotive should not have exceeded 60 miles per hour during that section of the journey. The driver's attention was distracted from the approaching 50 miles per hour permanent speed restriction after the fault on the locomotive had occurred, and no engineered safety system intervened to apply the locomotive's brakes, relating to the fact that prior to the driver applying the emergency brakes themselves, there was no brake demand or intervention to the train, with TPWS only stepping in after the emergency brakes had already been applied, and the driver's successful acknowledgement of the AWS warning meant that the system had no reason to intervene. TPWS was arguably weakened by the combination of the locomotive's fast acceleration and comparatively low braking performance. Following the accident, the driver was subject to Freightliner's disciplinary processes. 90006 was repaired for any damage and is now back in traffic, and the switch diamond was also repaired, with the Stafford Slow Lines being reopened on the 1st of September 2023. The RAIB made two recommendations, both to Freightliner Group, with the goal being for Freightliner to more effectively manage the risks associated with the operation of light locomotives and to improve the ability of Freightliner's train drivers to effectively deal with out-of-course scenarios. Drawing my own personal conclusions, this accident shares a handful of similarities with the Bletchley de derailment, an accident I have covered on this channel, which also involved a Freightliner Class 90 as a light locomotive. It is important for this accident to highlight the importance of driver attention and good driving standards, and the responsibility of the train operating company to ensure that they are effectively managing and aiding the drivers in assessing the risks associated with the operation of light locomotives alongside scenarios associated with that that aren't standard, such as faults and failures. It may also highlight the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of TPWS and AWS in scenarios such as this one. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all the people who allowed me to use their images for this video. So that's Dan on the Stower, Electra88007, Mark Bowman, Sydney Bridge TMD, Villa Voyager82, and Zane on SWR. I always appreciate it. 
Um, once again, apologies for how long this video took. Um, if you've seen the community post I made, I've just I've been quite busy at the moment and a bit demotivated. But um, I still enjoy making these videos, even if it does take a little bit longer. I hope everyone has a good um, Christmas and happy holidays. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get another video out soon. I'm thinking about doing it on Potter's Bar. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy it. And I'll see you next time.